This video was produced to introduce basic information about the operation of standard equipment, machinery, and tools found in a metal shop. A video cannot replace in-person instruction. Watching a video does not replace experience, and this video does not introduce every possible situation or circumstance involved in using equipment successfully and safely. I do not assume liability for damage or injury resulting from the information this video provides. Continuing to watch this video affirms your agreement to waive any claim of liability you may have against me by implementing any procedure or recommendation contained here. Shops are inherently dangerous places full of equipment that can cause injury if not used correctly. You must use care and pay attention when using equipment for your own safety and for the safety of those around you. Dress appropriately to work with equipment, wear shoes that protect your feet and clothes that cover your skin, remove all loose clothing and jewelry, wear eye protection at all times. If you do not feel confident using a piece of equipment, don't. Ask for help or guidance from someone with more experience. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about are rivets. I love riveting. Don't laugh, a million years ago, I made these, like really a million years ago. Stainless steel, I don't know what they're for. Cooking, maybe? Didn't matter, that's what they are. Laser cut, rivets. So I clean up the metal, this one's not cleaned up. Uh, rivet them together and bend them. At its most basic, a rivet is some metal through holes in multiple layers of sheet metal that is then squished to keep that metal together. There are a lot of versions. You can buy rivets. You can buy pre-made rivets. Here are some copper ones. They have a domed head, flat shoulder, and a shaft. You can get them in all different lengths. It should go through your metal and have enough to dome over on the other side. So this is for very thick metal but you can also cut it shorter with a jeweler's saw if you wanted to put this through some thinner metal. You can buy them in all different metals. These are copper. You can buy them in brass. You can buy them in aluminum. Our supply store has a bunch of rivets ready for you from Hansen Rivet. And you should learn what these labels mean. There's lots of information on here, but the tiny little code means something. It's an aluminum rivet with a gold finish, and the other numbers refer to the dimensions. This is an aluminum rivet with a gold finish. So people who don't know better see this and assume it's brass or gold, but it's just an anodized gold surface over aluminum. So these are very soft, which is great for riveting. They have a pan head, a flat shoulder, a shaft, so this is a rivet press. It's mounted to the table. It has an arm that pulls down. We've got two rivet sets here. The bottom is concave and polished, and the top is flat and polished. So I can put my rivet dome side down, and it will maintain that beautiful finish. And then I can just squeeze this side. This requires a little bit of care. I can squeeze a little bit and still maintain movement. I can squeeze more and lock that up and make it tighter. So there is no release, there's no spring load, you just press instead of hammering and you get a smoother finish, slightly more elegant. This has limitations in depth and in height, so you need to be able to access both sides and fit your work in here, but this is a really nice way to make a fast, neat rivet. Right now, this press is set up with a concave polished surface on the bottom and a concave polished surface on the top. So I can put a rivet that has a domed head in there and compress it, and I will end up with a domed surface on both sides, which is super elegant. So you can buy rivets, but you can also make your own just out of wire. It's really good to have an assortment of wires lying around if you're going to do a lot of riveting. So this is brass wire, this is copper wire, this is aluminum wire. They're all different sizes, they fit in different size holes, and I can cut it to any length I want. What you need to know about making your own rivets, or even buying them, is the metal you're using must be softer than the metal you're riveting together. If you make the mistake, which many, many people do, of taking a piece of welding rod, which looks like copper on the outside, put it next to my copper rod, looks the same. But if you look at the end, it's shiny silver, steel. If you hold a magnet up to it, it's magnetic. Also, it's incredibly straight. 
copper wire is never that straight because it's softer. So what most students do is go buy this really inexpensive rod, they cut a piece off, and then they mangle it because it's so much denser and harder than the thin steel they're trying to rivet together. So I would never use that for a rivet. Let's do a basic rivet. Okay. Riveting takes some planning. I'm going to use a hand punch. What you want to do is match the punch size to your wire. Let's use the eighth inch punch. I'm going to punch holes in two pieces of metal. I'm not measuring. I'm not being careful. I'm not making anything nice. I'm just showing you riveting. So I have holes. I should try and match those holes to my wire size, which sometimes can happen and sometimes can't. This wire is quite a bit smaller than that. So if I try and make that rivet, the metal's going to squish over in ways that I don't like. That fits about the same. This is much too thick. So what I can do is either change the punch and get the right punch size, or take a handy reamer and just open that hole up enough that it fits my, my wire really nicely. It should be snug. So I've got my metal that goes nicely through there. In my dream world, I've pre-made my rivets with a nice square edge. I would use a jeweler's saw. I would take a file and clean that up beautifully. But I know that the dream world doesn't exist much. So I'm going to be show you a, a, a cheat. I want to put it through the metal. If you're trying to make a statement rivet, you might leave it longer. If you're trying to just make an elegant short rivet, you could make it shorter. I'm sure there's some math that people do to get these the right length. So it, I would jeweler saw this if I were doing it, and I would measure this. But I know my constituents who don't want to spend the time jeweler sawing this. So I want to show you that if I just nip it with these nippers, it has a terrible pointed tip. So many people decide to just use that as a rivet, and there's metal unevenly distributed there, and it will wind up squishing unevenly. But you could go back on the other axis with these nippers and at least smush the tip of this into more of a point. You could also take your file and file it, and that would be the best thing to do. If you're going to do a lot of riveting, holding them to file them is quite a challenge. There are all sorts of tools for holding things. I don't know what they're called. They're made for jewelers who hold lots of small things. It has leather jaws, and it holds this nicely. It's made to put a ring on this side while you work on it. But that's a really nice way, and then you file against the grip, not with it, or it'll wiggle. That's a really nice way to give you better grip, especially when those of you who are young now with strong hands get old and your hands don't work so well. You will like having some tools. So I've just made that a better edge. So now I've got all the components I need. I have metal with a hole, two layers. I have a piece of aluminum wire that fits nicely through. I'm going to put that in and I'm ready to go. You must never hammer on something that wasn't meant to be hammered on. Some of our vices have an anvil in the back you can hammer on, but don't hammer on any of the moving parts. I brought with me a metal block from home. This probably has a name too, I don't know what it's called. A portable anvil. We have anvils, we have lots of things you can hammer on, but don't hammer on something that you shouldn't. And then all I'm going to do is hammer it. A little bit on this side. A little bit on this side. While I can still move it, I want to adjust that so it's evenly spaced because I want it pretty. And I'm going to keep working from both sides. And I want to try and bring the sides in flat. If you hammer off and you get one side on an angle, the whole thing will then angle and smush on, on a diagonal. So the trick is just to work from both sides. That's it. I've made a rivet. A lot of people would argue that I have made an Ill inelegant rivet. I would argue that I could also find a hammer with a curved surface and go back and make it intentionally messy. I happen to think that's a really elegant look. It says I'm handmade, but I'm careful. If you're ever assembling something out of sheet metal where you want movement, a rivet is a really elegant way to secure things but allow movement.
Let's do one so you can see that in action. I'm going to do a copper rivet. I happen to know that this copper is not annealed. It's very hard. If I were actually seriously making a lot of rivets with this, I would anneal it, which is a process of heating the metal up to relax it. And that's something that, that we can do in the shop if you ask for some help. So this time I cut a copper rivet. And I use the jeweler saw. And I want to also go around and just file a very slight chamfer on that. Because when I hit this, that outer edge flares out. And if I really want this to be an elegant rivet, I have to remove some of that material just around the edge so that it compresses outwards a little more elegantly. I really like using a contrasting tone, a contrasting metal for my rivets. Aluminum, on, aluminum is fine. Um, I'm fussy about metal color. I really like copper and aluminum, or bronze and aluminum. So for me, that's the best rivet situation. Ooh, that's hard. So I've just, I've just condensed the metal enough to keep this together, but it's really loose and can move quite easily now. If that's too loose, I could hammer more. Um, one of the nice things about riveting is you can keep testing it. You can hammer a little, move it around a little bit. So I have a really nice looking detail. I have really nice containment and I have really amazing movement. Woo! Think of all the things you could do with that. Here are some samples in really terrible thin steel of different rivets. This is a copper rivet that's domed. This is, the, this is how it started its life. So I trimmed it shorter and then I just hammered this side a little bit. That's a super ridiculously overscaled rivet for, this, for what it's doing. But if you're making something where the rivets are really visible, you could turn that into a really exciting, intentional detail. This is just a piece of copper wire that's been hammered in. And then this is that same copper rivet, but with a piece of tubing in between. So this is also a really elegant method of getting two layers spaced apart but contained together. I want to tell you a little bit about my hammer, which is fancy. The hammers we have in the shop, ball-peen hammers, are just fine for riveting. There's nothing wrong with this end. And you can also use the peen hat side if you want to texture something. I do a lot of riveting, and I have a hammer that's polished, or at least was once. So it will transfer the smoother surface onto the copper and I can get a shinier rivet. I also have a flat side and a domed side. That's just a basic idea of rivet. Piece of metal squishing metal together. But there are many, many other options. You can make a rivet out of a piece of tubing. There is, it even says, pretty tube rivet. So this is a piece of tubing that was put through the hole and then the ends are flared over on both sides. This is a really beautiful detail, especially if you are making something where you want to pass wire through what you're doing, just like on clothing with a grommet. That's a, a beautiful edging detail. You can also make it so that you have rotation. Let's look at how to do that. So I just have a piece of brass tubing from the 3D store. You can get lots of different tubing. You can get different sizes, you can get different materials. Here's some tiny aluminum tubing. Here's some larger aluminum tubing. This has very thin wall, so it, it, it's a little bit fussy to work with. That's what this is made out of, which is why it's a little squished there. I mean, if you really want, you could take this tubing and do something with it. With a tubing rivet, getting the length correct is really important. I don't know a formula for that. I'm sure there is one. I would experiment and then figure out what the right length was and write that down and make more of that length. But for now, I'm just going to guess. You could use a tubing cutter to cut this, but it compresses the end and then it's very difficult to flare that out and make it into a rivet. If you use handheld cutters, you'll just squish the tubing completely. So unfortunately for anyone who doesn't like the jeweler saw, it really is the best tool for cutting tubing. 
It's also a little frustrating to cut tubing. It tends to pinch the blade. And then just like with a wire rivet, I want to clean up that edge a little bit. I'm going to just file the burr off. <laughs> so I got my piece of tubing through my hole with extra on either side, probably more than I need. And what I want to do is flare that tubing over on both sides and then condense it around. I found that a really nice tool for that is the very wide center punch that has almost no point that lives in the cupboard here. Because I can use it, and I'm not using my nice hammer, I'm using this hammer. I can use it to flare that metal out. And just like with a normal rivet, I'm going to work from both sides. And once that metal's flared out a little bit, I can switch to using the peen on the hammer and work on turning that metal around. What you're all going to want to do is the lowest form of riveting possible, which is called a blind rivet or a pop rivet. Blind rivets arrived with the aviation industry because the kind of rivets I've been showing you, you need access to the front and back of the piece. And that will be a problem for a lot of the things that people want to do with sheet metal. A blind rivet allows you to go in from the outside only and create a rivet. Pop rivets come in all different kinds and sizes. The packages will tell you about all the dimensions. I have lots of these. I have copper ones. The shaft is steel and copper plated. Aluminum ones, the shaft is steel and the rivet is aluminum. The aluminum ones can be anodized, so there's some white ones. They come very, very short for thin metal and they come ridiculously long. I don't have any ridiculously long ones here. Oh, yes, I do. There, ridiculously long. This is designed to put through something very, very thick. So just the end flares over, and that's a long shaft. So I've got the rivet through the holes. It has enough sticking out that it will make a mush on that side, but not too much. And I'm going to put it in the rivet gun, and I'm going to squeeze. I would I w make sure your metal is up against the shoulder because once you squeeze, let's do one with no metal on it so you can see what happens. Each time I squeeze, it's pulling the steel shaft up and condensing that aluminum. One squeeze, two squeeze, and each time I release, I'm going to push it back down on because the amount that it has pulled up needs to be shoved back in. And you can see this is, it's just getting uglier and uglier. But as that steel shaft pulls in, it's expanding the aluminum to hold your metal together. And then when it gets too much pressure, so when that's all as tight as it can be, it will break off. And this is why we also call this a pop rivet, because it does that. Then the steel shaft is inside here, and you have to make sure you open the handle and get it out. They tend to bind up in there if you don't. Here's the one that I'm set up to do with a better size rivet. It takes some hand strength to do this. And remember, if you hold it at the end of the handle, you'll get better, better action. But if you have small hands, this is going to be really difficult. And when it gets tight, you can feel all the resistance. I usually then get both hands, break that off. So there's the back. It's not hideous, but it's not as elegant as a handmade rivet. Also, it still has the end of the steel shaft in there. It has broken the steel shaft off on this side. So a pop rivet has a pretty shoulder, but it always has a sharp piece of steel in the middle, and it always has a smush on the back. So these are really, really useful for assembling things. I think they're great for sketching. If you want to attach a bunch of stuff fast, hold it together. Um, there's n nothing faster than this. And if you've made something where you can only access the outside, you'll have to use something like a pop rivet, but you'll never get a really nice detail out of it. The other kind of rivet I want to talk about is called not a solid rivet and not a tubular rivet, but a semi-tubular rivet. Semi-tubular rivets have a head, a solid head, and then a piece of tubing. And you put it in and flare that tubing over. So you get all of the elegance of a perfect little finished domed head 
and all of the sort of neat finish of a rolled tubular rivet. And these are designed to be set with a rivet set. For years, I made pins, thousands of little pins that said amusing things. This one says, I need this like I need a hole in the head. I was planning for this year decades ago. And so I have a press that I would do this on, but just to show you here, we'll do it by hand. This was the fastest way to assemble things where the metal had a, a coating on it and couldn't be heated. And then if I take my set, there are hand sets available. I have never found this very useful because it has such a shallow throat and because it's quite hard to hold. You could put it in a vise while you're using it, but I found this to be a struggle. So I used it three times and put it away. We have a, d a deeper throated press here that's about eight inches, and you can also set them by hand. So here are two pieces of aluminum and a semi-tubular rivet. I've got the domed head up and the flare side down. You just have to be sensitive about how much pressure it needs. A bit more. And there, very quickly, I've given myself one of the most elegant rivet situations. A domed head on one side and a perfectly flared semi-tubular inside. I've also done it loose enough that I can rotate. And I know you're going to laugh, but I used to have students put five rivets in uh, two squares of metal to practice a solid store-bought rivet, a handmade rivet, a pop rivet, a semi-tubular rivet, and a tubular rivet. And this is generally what they looked like, which is so discouraging. I hope you see how wrong this is. The goal was to practice riveting until you could do all of these nicely and turn in a beautiful little sample of your beautiful rivets. Um, this is my idea of a nightmare. And all of these have gone wrong. These are just pop rivets because the student didn't even want to bother. This is a solid rivet that's not even tight. Once this metal wrinkled, it could never be pulled together again. This is a supposed to be a tubular rivet, but it's missing the whole point of a tubular rivet. This is a semi-tubular rivet that even with a machine to do it is a mess. So you can use rivets to make horrible, ugly things, but you can also, with almost no extra effort, have a whole range of really beautiful options for attaching metal elegantly and usefully. Woohoo!